Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy I can finally share um, this selection with you because a few weeks ago when I filmed my morning chat, I had already put my makeup on before I came on camera, which is not normal for morning chats, right? Because I get ready with you guys. But yeah, I couldn't talk about the products yet, so I didn't want to just come on and do my makeup secretly. But these are the products that I was wearing on my face that day um, in that video. So here is Beauty Heroes. Um, this is the elective makeup discovery, meaning it only comes out a few times a year. Unlike the other monthly discoveries where you have to be a Beauty Heroes member to receive those boxes, um, you can subscribe to this box. Well, not even subscribe. You can purchase this box as like a one-time purchase as a non-member, but it will be available for non-members a day after the members. So this video I'm planning to upload on July 20th. That's when it'll be available to you guys. And then on the 21st is when it will be open to the general public. So in this box, you get three full-size products, which are, you get a CC cream, a concealer, and a mascara. And then on the side, you get three really generous samples of foundation and they you get the samples based on the color you chose for your cc cream and your concealer so the total value of this box if my math is correct is 134 dollars but if you pick up this selection through beauty heroes um, for this month i believe it's going to be available for a month or until it sells out actually um, you can get this whole thing for 59 dollars let me run you through the prices really quickly. So the CC cream, this is one fluid ounce and it's $38. Then we have the concealer, it's um, 0.12 ounces. 0.12 ounces, it's like standard amount of concealer, I would say. And this retails for $32. And then we've got our vegan black mascara, um, full size, eight milliliter. This is $34. And each foundation sample is valued at $10. You know, I actually think I've tried something from Sappho years ago. I just don't remember. I think it was the foundation. I feel like I got a sample of this somewhere, but I really can't put my finger on it. Um, but other than that, I am not very familiar with this brand but I do remember this packaging. So after I tell you a little bit more about these products, you guys are gonna see a demo of me putting on these products on my face, minus the foundation. Um, I will actually swatch that for you soon, but I did not wear any of this in today's demo. But yeah, you will see me put on the CC cream, the concealer, and the mascara in this video. So why don't we start with the CC cream? This is in the shade um, medium. It's made in Canada. And this has a shelf life of a generous 24 months. This is described as a medium weight color correcting cream. So some of the ingredients include aloe vera, jojoba, coconut oil, chamomile, pomegranate seed, apple, and pineapple fruit, fruit extracts. And just, ooh, and just to share, um, the coconut oil, I haven't had any issues with it clogging my pores and that is one ingredient that is questionable for me sometimes, but yeah, no breakouts, no irritation. This has been fantastic on me. I do want to point out that in the fold out, it says that while this is not rated as an SPF, it does contain 10% zinc oxide, but even still, I would recommend layering with sunscreen underneath this if you're going to be spending time outdoors in the sun. So next is the concealer. This comes in a glass jar, which I love. Um, this has a base of coconut, jojoba, sunflower, and I don't know how to say this, caranaba waxes. I'll put the text up here. And it's also infused with um, organic argan oil, anti-inflammatory licorice, and chamomile. This claims to be ideal for concealing dark patches, blemishes, and uneven skin tone. So these two are your heroes. And then we've got our sidekick, which is the vegan black mascara. This claims to be smudge proof. 
and it's formulated with a fruit wax base of bayberry, sustainably harvested palm, and candelilia is going to be my guess for pronouncing this. <laughs> okay, this is described as glossy and deeply pigmented. It ensures long, voluminous, thick lashes. So this is supposed to dry quickly and not transfer. I actually forgot to test out how quickly it dried because I like to put on mascara and then just do this a little bit to see how much comes off on my fingers. I forgot to do that, but I'd already applied my makeup. <laughs> but I will say that it doesn't transfer. I don't end up getting any um, mascara smudges sitting on top of my concealer in my under eye area. It also promises easy removal with just warm water. And just because I did not put this foundation on in the demo, I'm going to swatch these for you. So I, I received three shades um, in Rosalina, Kate, and Jennifer. So let's start with Jennifer first. I would say these three are pretty similar though. Um, I mean, if you remove the names and you put these side by side, I couldn't tell you couldn't really tell you the difference. So this first one is Jennifer. Oh yeah, it's definitely runnier than the CC cream. This middle one is Rosalina. And this one is Kate. I like how light this feels. Including these samples was such a nice touch Beauty Heroes because each of these if you even go onto Sappho's website They go for ten dollars and you know, it's always nice to Have not just one color but like three Colors in the same shade range to see which one's a good fit for you so that you don't buy a full size and you know If it's not a good match and then you're just wasting product. So very well done Beauty Heroes Okay, so while I go and clean off the swatches and wash my hands. I'm gonna play the demo for you guys of me getting ready with these products. All right, so my face is clean. I've toned and serumed and moisturized. So I'm gonna go in with the Sappho CC Cream in medium. I was actually surprised by the size of this product. When I unboxed it, for whatever reason, I pictured it to be bigger. And I was like, wow, it's so small, even though this is the full size. But you really, like I really use so little, I can see this lasting for a really long time. So let me show you the texture and like the amount that I use. Okay, honestly, even that might be too much, but it's this very kind of moussey texture. One thing I really appreciate about it is that I do not need a beauty blender or a foundation brush or any tool other than my fingers to, uh, for this to blend out really well. So I love that. Get a little bit closer. Yeah, it just, it really just blends right into my skin. I will say uh, when I first squeezed the product out of the tube, I thought it looked really dark, but it's a pretty good match for my skin. I'd also like to point out that this is my first CC cream. I've never owned a CC cream before. Um, and honestly, I thought for the longest time that a CC cream was just like a gimmicky BB cream. And you guys know I've lived in Korea for the last six, seven years. And that was just one of the many K-beauty products that I personally couldn't get on board with. Yeah, and because I don't have much experience with CC creams, like I don't know how this compares to other formulas. But so far, like my experience with this product has been really pleasant. Um, I received this selection at the beginning of July. So today's what? July 16th? Sorry, today's the 18th. So I've been wearing this product almost for 16 days. I didn't wear makeup every single day, but I would say like for the large majority of this month, I did put something on. There's that here. Let me just give you a close up on my skin. I think it really just looks like my skin. Um, I'd say the coverage is slightly, you get slightly more coverage with this than the Glossier Skin Tint. And I will swatch that for you right now. 
And again, I'm using this one as a reference because this is the one, this is my base that I've used for many years now. I'll put them side by side and then we'll look at the formula. Okay. So this is Glossier Skin Tint in Dark, way runnier, more sheer and lighter in coverage. And then this is the Sappho. So I'd say that skin tint is more yellow, but because it's so sheer, it, you can probably, um, you don't have to be an exact color match for it, but you can get away with it because it's so sheer. This one's less runny, more moussey. And I'd say it has like light to medium coverage. When I look at them side by side, on my hands here. The Sappho does look more pink and the skin tint looks way more yellow. Hmm. But yeah, on my skin, they both look very, very natural. So on a very humid day or if I know I'm going to be like hanging out, meeting people or on the very rare occasion I'm taking pictures or something, I will powder my T-zone. But honestly, on a day-to-day, -day, I don't mind if I look a little bit, you know, dewier than I do now because it still looks really natural. Because it's not a heavy coverage, I don't think I look like an oily um, grease slick or anything like that. So this is pretty much how I would leave it. So now I'm going to go in with the Sappho concealer and I'm just going to spot cover some blemishes actually before i apply that i just wanted to show you a side by side comparison with the other concealers in my collection and um yeah when i first opened up the sappho i was like "Ooh, i don't know if that's gonna work for me and you'll see why so here's rms beauty's uncover up in 33. it's pretty yellow but pretty good match for my skin and then here's sappho right so I mean, I hope the camera translates, but just right out of the jar, this one looks way more pink. And I thought, oh yeah, that's not gonna work for me, especially if I wanna cancel out, you know, redness and hyperpigmentation. And then the third concealer that I have, this is Glossy's Stretch Concealer in medium. Okay, there we go. So this one looks super light. And honestly, I only use this under my eyes. I don't cover blemishes with this one. So here's all three next to each other. We got Sappho, RMS Uncover Up in 33, and uh, Glossier Stretch Concealer. Here are the three concealers swatched for you. This is Glossier's Stretch Concealer, definitely the most dewy of the three. This is the Sappho in medium, and this one is RMS Uncover Up in 33. So this is definitely the glossiest, second glossiest or just dewy. And then you got your semi-matte Sappho concealer. My favorite place to apply it is under my eyes because I like that it stays put there. I really don't need very much at all. And as much as I love the look of the Glossier Stretch Concealer under my eyes because it really gives you that dewy look, um, it does move around. and. You know, Glossier designed it that way. They want their concealer to move with your skin, hence the name Stretch Concealer. But it doesn't look very nice <laughs> under your eyes when your concealer moves around. Um, but I will say with the Sappho one, like right after I put this on, I don't have to touch it up for the rest of the day. It just, it stays put and it has a semi-matte finish. Blend, just tap, I don't rub, but yeah. And I would even say that if I give it a little bit of time and it kind of mixes with, you know, the natural oils on my face, it looks even more natural. On the camera right now, it does look kind of white, but yeah, I like, I like how it looks once it kind of settles in. I've got one pimple here that just wanted to come out yesterday right in time for this video. <laughs> but it's good because um, I haven't covered any active breakouts yet with this concealer, so... We'll see how that looks, um, but before I go into that one, I do want to put some on my cheeks. This is where I have my hyperpigmentation. I've never had issues with it looking cakey on my cheeks, but I do find that if I layer too much on my chin, it can look cakey. I've got some marks here I want to cover up. Just do a little bit because 
yeah this is where it will look really obvious that I'm wearing concealer if I go too heavy-handed with it then I'll get closer while we cover up this bit I mean sometimes when I have a pimple like this that's this 3d I feel like covering it up actually draws more attention to it <laughs> so I mean if the rest of my face looks really natural from you know my base sometimes I just I let these big guys just hang out and I don't bother covering it but for the purposes of this demo whoop I will attempt my best. Okay. I mean, yeah, it's very apparent that I have a breakout there, but the redness went down, and I'd say the rest of my face looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm not even going to powder um, the places where I put concealer, because I usually don't. And I would say that in even in humid weather, this concealer does a really good job of staying put. And I would say the only drawback is, um, I mean, if I had to pick one because I actually really like this concealer and I had very low expectations for this, like I usually do um, when picking up natural concealers. I feel like natural or like green beauty brand concealers and mascaras are very hit or miss for me most of the time they're misses so i went in with very low expectations and i really like it so with that said if i had to state a con about it i guess is this isn't as versatile as the rms beauty on cover up and i say that because with the uncover up i you know can use it as a foundation and a concealer when i'm in a pinch i very rarely use this entire thing on my face but if i needed to i i would do that i would not use the sappho all over my face i just feel like just my personal preference i don't want that much coverage all right so i'm going to fill in my brows curl my lashes put on a little bit of cheek product and i'll be right back Okay, so with the last product in this discovery, and the only one that did not do it for me, is the Sappho um, Vegan Black Mascara. Okay, there's the wand. It's supposed to create voluminous and thick lashes, but for me, if anything, if it does anything, is that it separates. So hopefully you can see, hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. So yeah, at first it's like, oh, okay, it's separating, I like where we're headed. False promises. You know, I don't even entirely blame the formula. I, I know a large part of the reason for this not working is because I have very straight stiff Asian lashes so yeah I mean it looks like there's a little bit of volume and thickening right now but I promise you by the time this video is over my lashes will have gone back to being straight and then over time throughout the day they just start drooping straight down like this um it does claim to be smudge free and i would have to say like compared to even some of the other mascaras that i do like it doesn't give me crazy panda eyes so i will give it that i recently picked up the glossy lash stick and i think i got this maybe like a week before this one came but they're not too different actually <laughs> I know like the glossy lash slick too, it's been like very hit or miss, like people either love it or they don't. I see the wands are kind of similar. Yeah, so that's what that looks like. They have like the very light plastic bristles. Yeah, on me, they're pretty similar performance wise. I would say the Glossier gets like an extra point because it holds my curl like slightly Seriously, like a minuscule difference, but slightly better than the Sappho. So yeah, unfortunately, I don't really love either of these products. 
like I said with having low expectations for like green beauty brand concealers I go in with that same mindset when it comes to mascaras even conventional mascaras most of them just don't work for me and it just has to be my type of lashes because I know there are certain ones that people love like that Maybelline one great lash is it I don't even know didn't work for me at all um too too faced Better than sex mascara. I know a ton of people love that. Not for me at all. Again, like the formula is like too wet. Same thing, like it makes my lashes straight again and then it droops and then it smudges. What else? Um, the Lily Lolo, I hated that one. <laughs> so yeah, so for me, when I find a mascara and it works, I stick to it. And that is why I've been using the Japanese brand, the Heroin Make. The ones that you guys have seen me talk about, it's the one in like the pink tube, but I think that got discontinued. It's been pretty tough even to find um, when I was in Asia. So I bought the uh, waterproof, the super waterproof version. I imagine they formulated this with, you know, us short, uh, short straight Asian lashes in mind. But I've been really loyal to this brand for the last six years now. Because it works, right? Yeah, I mean, I feel like if you already have lush, naturally curled lashes, this might be really nice um, to separate and give you that volume. But if you're like me and you're trying to create that and then using this to hold it, it's just, it's, it's not going to work for me. One perk of this, I would say, and it's written in the claims, is that it's supposed to be very easy to remove. Like, you can remove it with water only, and that's how Glossier markets their lash slick as well. So, yeah, you don't even have to go in, technically, with, you know, a heavy eye makeup remover and just, like, really, you know, like, harass your eyes. I have not tried the water only, and that's just because at night when I do my first cleanse of removing makeup, I mean, I already have, um whatever cleanser I'm using to remove it and I just naturally just massage my entire face including my eyes so yeah I've just never left my eyes alone and then cleanse the rest of my face and then wash this part out with water only it just this seems like an extra step for me so I couldn't tell you how well you know this is removed with just water but that option is there however I will say that when I use um, when I do my first cleanse and I use a warm wet washcloth to remove my makeup I don't have to really I don't have to be harsh at all when I remove this mascara it's just I just take um, I take the washcloth and I kind of, you know, wrap it around my index finger and then I can just even put like very slight pressure and just blink up a few times and it will come off. And I don't have panda eyes in the morning. Okay, so that's my entire face with the Sappho CC cream, the concealer, and the mascara. Alright, so to wrap up, if you are looking for a new base, like a foundation slash tinted moisturizer sort of thing, or even a new concealer, I feel like this selection, you get such a great um, deal because you're getting three full-size products and like a selection of samples in case, you know, you wanted something slightly different than the CC, like if you wanted the foundation. So yeah, just value-wise, I think... Beauty Heroes did such a good job of curating this box. It was going to take a lot for me to, you know, stray from my Glossier skin tint. But ever since this came into my life, I haven't missed this very much. Not to say I'll stop using this, but, you know, I always have the option of testing something out when I'm doing these kinds of videos. Because I know I can always go back to my trusted and true. But... Honest to God, like since I received this box, this is all that has been going on my face. So yeah, if you're in the market for um, the CC cream, I would probably say that's my favorite product of this box. Um, the concealer, I was pleasantly surprised by. The mascara I could do without. I always love to know how makeup products perform on different skin tones, skin types, different lashes. If you've had great success with this mascara, please let me know down in the comments. And if you've had an experience similar to mine, I'd love to know about that as well. So yeah, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Um, thank you so much for watching and I'll chat with you guys down below in the comments. Bye.